Hey everyone, it's Samantha. From getting fired numerous times to dealing with serious family issues, this is the truth about Jimmy Kimmel. Number 17, Early Years. James Christian Kimmel was born in 1967 in Brooklyn, New York. He has two siblings, Jonathan Kimmel and Jill Bryan. His family's original last name was Kimmel, but it eventually changed when his paternal great-grandparents immigrated to the United States. When Jimmy was nine years old, he and his family moved to Las Vegas, Nevada. He got his diploma from Ed W. Clark High School and enrolled in classes at the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. After a year, he began attending Arizona State University. However, he only spent two years there and dropped out. It wasn't until 2013 that he was awarded an honorary degree from UNLV. Number 16, Wife and Kids. Kimmel began dating Molly McNearney, a writer for Jimmy Kimmel Live, in 2009. They became engaged a few years later and tied the knot in 2013. They had their first child, Jane, in 2014. A few years after that, she gave birth to their second child, William John. Jimmy also has children from his previous marriage. Catherine was born in 1991 and Kevin was born in 1993. Number 15, exes. Although Kimmel has been married to McNearney for about five years, he had a couple of relationships before his current one. We already noted that he has two children from his previous marriage, which was to Gina Maddie. They got hitched in 1988 and got divorced in 2002. But before he got together with his current wife, the star also dated Sarah Silverman, a famous fellow comedian. They originally met during the Hugh Hefner Friars Club roast in 2001 and became the funniest couple in Hollywood in 2002. Silverman and Kimmel even got along with each other's parents. Sarah said, I was really nervous, but really soon after meeting them, I was comfortable putting my head on his mom's lap, and his dad was comfortable releasing the most toxic gas around me. However, they initially split in 2008, and right reconciled for a short time later that year. Then in 2009, they ended things for good. Number 14, Radio Host. Jimmy started his career fairly young while he was still in high school. He notably hosted an interview show on Sunday nights at UNLV's College Station. Kimmel also had a regular presence as a caller during the afternoon show on KZZP FM in Phoenix, Arizona, which was hosted by Ken Voss and Mike Elliott. Then in 1989, he got a job as co-host of the Me and Him show with Voss in Seattle, Washington's KZOK FM radio station. Unfortunately, just 10 months after they got the segment, the duo was fired. This seemed to become a pattern for Kimmel. He was let go a year after that from Tampa, Florida's WRBQ FM station. He eventually started hosting a show of his own on the KCMJ radio station in Palm Springs, California. It was during this time that he hired Carson Daly as an intern. Then, he spent a short while doing a morning show for KRQQ in Tucson, Arizona. Later, after leaving that station, he became Jimmy the Sports Guy during the Kevin and Beam morning show at KROQ FM in Los Angeles, California. Number 13, Narcolepsy. Something you might not have known about Jimmy Kimmel is that he has narcolepsy, a sleeping disorder. He spoke about it with New York Times Magazine. He said that the condition has caused him to nod off in his car and sometimes during meetings with writers. Kimmel noted, it's not the best way to make people feel good about their material. He even joked, stating, Jimmy Kimmel, the narcoleptic late night host, has a ring to it. He takes medication to combat the symptoms and it hasn't had any detrimental effects on his career so far. Number 12, artist. Although we all know him from hosting, Kimmel originally wanted to be an artist. He stated in an interview with the New York Times, when I was a kid, I wanted to be an artist. I'd stay up late, drawing for hours, watching Carson and Letterman on the small black on white TV. Jimmy also noted that although he enjoyed doing artwork, he developed more of an interest in television during this time. However, he still spends his downtime illustrating various things. As the interview continued, he drew pictures to answer each question, including one of himself, Bugs Bunny, and his daughter Jane. Number 11, Ben Stein. Pretty much everyone knows that Jimmy Kimmel is a television host. However, do you know how he began? He started his TV career on Win Ben Stein's Money, a game show that aired on Comedy Central in 1997. The episodes each featured three contestants who would answer various questions to try and win $5,000 from Stein. His contrast from Ben Stein's comedic style earned him a lot of attention. Around the same time, he started co-hosting and co-producing The Man Show with Adam Carolla and Daniel Kellison, respectively. In 2001, he left Win Ben Stein's money and began working on other projects. Number 10, Awards. Jimmy Kimmel has won several awards for his work so far. In 1999, he took home a daytime Emmy for his work on Win Ben Stein's Money. He also has two OFTA television awards for the same show. Kimmel even has a star in Hollywood's Walk of Fame and two awards from the Writers Guild of America. Number 9, Matt Damon. If you are a Jimmy Kimmel fan, then I'm sure you've heard of these stars' less than friendly relationship. Matt Damon and the comedian have been feuding for years. Now the bickering is all in good humor, nevertheless, it still exists. During Jimmy Kimmel's live third season, he began ending each segment by saying, my apologies to Matt Damon, we ran out of time. Kimmel noted later on that he didn't pick Damon's name for any particular reason. He stated, Matt Damon was just the first name that popped into my head. I was trying to think of an A-list star and somebody we absolutely would not bump if he was on the show. The legs on this bit are unbelievable to me. I mean, people laugh every time I say it. 
Repeating the same joke every single night, you think eventually people will get tired of it, but they don't. As the jest continued, it led to several hilarious events. While Jimmy was dating Sarah Silverman, she even made a music video with Damon, in which she sang about having an affair with the actor. In an episode of Jimmy Kimmel Live, Matt took over as host. Jimmy was tied to a chair with a necktie in his mouth when Damon rolled him out on stage. The feud continued as they went to couples counseling. Damon made fun of Kimmel while he was hosting the Emmys, and Matt posed as Tom Brady for another episode of Jimmy Kimmel Live. However, it didn't stop there. The playful fight keeps going. Number 8. Crank Yankers When the man show proved successful, Jimmy Kimmel and the other members of Jack Hole Productions created the show Crank Yankers. Although many of you might not remember the series nowadays, since it ended in 2007, it was definitely a unique take on your average comedy. During the show, prank phone calls that were made to actual people would be played. Then, along with the call, the victims and prankers would be portrayed as puppets. Kimmel voiced the characters of Terrence Catheter, The Nudge, Elmore Higgins, and Carl Malone. Number 7. Musician Another interesting fact about Jimmy Kimmel is that he plays music. That's right, this aspiring artist turned comedian also plays bass clarinet. It's crazy to think he's talented in so many areas. He even performed in 2008 at a concert in Costa Mesa, California. He played the tune The Impression I Get alongside The Mighty Mighty Boss tones. Number 6. Cookbook Something else you might not know about this star is that he has an addiction to cookbooks. Kimmel has stated that he owns over 1,000 of them, and he has gained somewhat of a reputation for being a good cook. He often makes his own pizza dough and fresh pulled mozzarella cheese. Kimmel has thrown a pizza party for Oprah and prepared an entire feast for Howard and Beth Stern. Jimmy also makes cartoon pancakes for his children nearly every morning, according to his wife, and they're all spot-on depictions of different characters like Snoopy and Peppa Pig. Number 5. Altar Boy Jimmy Kimmel was raised in a Catholic household and has remained religious throughout his life. But did you know that when he was a kid, he was an altar boy? That's right, before Kimmel was hosting radio shows and moving on to television, he was taking part in weddings, funerals, and other events at his local church. Number 4. Influences This funny guy has risen all the way to the top, so it shouldn't surprise anyone that he has some major influences that helped him find his path to stardom. He noted that Howard Stern and David Letterman had significant impacts on his comedic style. Kimmel once described the latter saying, His show was just so weird and different. I'd never seen anything like it. I didn't know anyone who had a sense of humor like that. It seems that Kim will learn from the best considering his amazing success throughout the years. Don't forget to subscribe! Number 3. Host Not only has Jimmy hosted his show nearly every night of the year, but he also hosted various award shows throughout his career. He presented the Primetime Emmy Awards in 2012 and again in 2016. Plus, he introduced the Academy Awards in 2017 and 2018. Kimmel was even nominated for his work in the latter two events. Number 2. Sun Sickness One of the hardest things Jimmy Kimmel and his family had to endure happened in 2017, when his son William was born. Their baby was diagnosed with Tetralogy of Fallot with pulmonary atresia, which means the blood isn't fully oxygenated as it flows through the body, and the valve leading to the pulmonary artery is obstructed, according to ABC News. The nurse noticed that the newborn was a purplish color just a few hours after he was born. William was then rushed to the neonatal intensive care unit, and medical personnel saw symptoms of a heart defect. About a week after, when his son was doing well, he talked about the incident on the show. He stated, The room started to fill up, more doctors, nurses, and equipment started coming in, and they determined that he wasn't getting enough oxygen into his blood. It's a terrifying thing. They had to transfer William to the Children's Hospital in Los Angeles, and he had to undergo open-heart surgery. The first surgery went well. However, Kimmel's son had to go through two more until he was perfectly healthy. He also had Dr. Oz on Jimmy Kimmel Live to explain his son's condition and noted that most people forget that he is a heart surgeon. Jimmy even started fighting against the repeal of the Affordable Care Act, he said, The reason I'm talking about this is because my son had open heart surgery and has to have two more. Because of that, I learned that there are kids with no insurance in the same situation. I don't get anything out of this. Number 1. Jimmy Kimmel Live Perhaps what Jimmy Kimmel is most well known for nowadays is his show Jimmy Kimmel Live. We've previously discussed some of the guest appearances and events on his late night series, but you might not know how the entire gig came to be. In 2003, he finished his time with The Man Show to begin Jimmy Kimmel Live. After a ABC became interested in him starting his own talk show. Opposed to its title, the episodes don't actually air live, since 2004 anyway, when they were unable to bleep out a lot of profanity from Thomas Jane. However, it is ABC's longest-running late-night talk show in history. According to Kimmel's story on Biography.com, one of the more notable episodes featured celebrities like Keith Urban, Lenny Kravitz, Matthew McConaughey, Sting, and Tony Romo, who made up the handsome men's club. During the episode, they kick Jimmy, the president of the group, out entirely, and Matt Damon slams the door in his face. The show has also caused some controversy, including an episode where 
where one of the children during the kids' table segment suggested getting rid of everyone in China as a solution to the United States debt. Kimmel told the child that it was an interesting idea and added, should we allow the Chinese to live? Needless to say, many people were upset with this joke. ABC apologized, saying, we would never purposely broadcast anything to upset the Chinese community, Asian community, anyone of Chinese descent, or any community at large. However, over 100 people began protesting in the streets of San Francisco to demand that Kimmel lose his job and asked for a better apology. Even a petition of 100,000 signatures was made, requiring the White House to step in. Luckily for Jimmy and ABC, the event wasn't excessively detrimental to the show. Today's featured comment comes from Mr. Kingfisher on our Truth About Eminem video. Thanks for your thoughts, Kingfisher. Don't forget to leave your thoughts below, and we might feature you in a future video. Hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.